How's it going everyone? So I just did a poll on my channel about what would you rather see more of, live Q&As or just me riding around and talking? And the overwhelming percentage wanted me to ride around and talk and in different environments. So like right now I'm just kind of on the city streets and around the neighborhood in Pacific Beach. And um, I'm just gonna be talking about what I'm doing and what I'm thinking about and just little things, right? So first, look where I'm stopping right here, right? So I'm always in first gear. I'm not putting the bike in neutral, make sure there's no one around me, right? Paying attention to my surroundings. I could see and be seen, right? So I could see all the way down the line. I'm not crossing over the other side, of course, but I could see all the way down to what's going on up ahead. Is there someone turning? Is there an ambulance? Is there a car parked? What's going on? So I'm escape route to the left if there's no oncoming cars or if I go over there to the shoulder. I just don't want to stop dead center behind the middle of a truck. That's pretty stupid. And putting the bike in neutral, as I think is also pretty damn stupid. I could care less about a little bit of extra clutch wear. If you're worried about that, you should probably just park your bike so you can make the tires last longer too because you're an idiot. Um, leave the bike in gear and be ready to escape. Uh, what was I talking about? Yeah, so, yeah. So I'm always right here on a two-lane road. Plus, another stupid thing I see people do, they ride way over here. Now, what's the problem? Obviously, if one of these car doors opened up, I would have to swerve to get out of the way, right? Well, don't ride over there. That's what I'm talking about when I say use your brain before your skill. Put yourself in a better position to see people and be seen and give yourself the best opportunity to make sure you don't have to put yourself in a position where you have to use swerving or stopping. When I first started riding, I was swerving and stopping very fast everywhere because I was riding around like an idiot, riding around in people's blind spots, not assuming that they're gonna do something stupid, and I was unprepared to even do whatever it is I had to do because I didn't practice, so I was all around pretty jacked up. So right now I'm in first gear, I'm just, I have the clutch pulling, I'm pretty much just coasting all the way down, because I know I'm gonna have to slow down a lot just to get through this corner. So now I'm gonna go down this little spot right here and I'll have to go right, or I'm gonna have to go left. But it's a two lane road, but there's often traffic right here. And a lot of people are usually trying to go left at this little part before the light. So I just try to get in front of the people as much as I can. Um, that seems like a good amount. Switch lanes, go over. Even right here with two lane traffic, you see where I am? I'm not going way over to the left and hiding. Because I don't want someone come up behind or coming up to the right of me and not maybe knowing I'm there and just kind of share my lane with me. So I'm always trying to protect my lane and be seen as much as possible. And as I'm coming up to a light like this, like, can I fit is my only question. If the answer is yes and I feel like lane splitting, okay. If I could fit, then I will split. So this forerunner is pretty far over. But looking at this little car, I still think I could fit. Maybe I'm about to knock this guy's mirror off. Nope, I'm good. So that's the only question I ever ask myself. If I know I, I want to go to the front of the lane, like I am right now, and for all you people saying it's legal in my state, well, who cares? I'm not in your, I'm not in your state. It's legal here in California to do what I just did, so I'm gonna do it. So if it's not legal where you are, well, I don't know what to tell you. It sucks to be you, I guess. So my first decision is if I wanna come up to the middle. What's up? Too late to drag now we could drag race if you want to. You'll win though. You'll beat me. You'll beat me. You'll beat me. I could push the bike. <laughs> yes, yes. Yeah, that happens a lot. Whenever I'm on my bike riding around, people just like to chat and talk. Maybe he had a bike way back when. Or maybe he still rides. Who knows? But hopefully he does. Anyway, if I decide to lane split, and, and my, my only other decision as I'm going up is it, can I fit? Now, if that white forerunner right back there was too far over, I could just pull up right until then and then just stop. No one says you have to go to the front. No one says you have to lane split. Even if you are in a state that allows it, no one says you have to lane split. And I highly don't recommend lane splitting unless you actually know what you're doing and um, you're a really good rider and you're aware of the dimensions of your bike because if not, then you're just setting yourself up for trouble. For example, I'm about to go left. Make sure the cars are stopped. I'm about to go left and then I could just go directly into lane splitting because it's a two lane road. And the only time you're even allowed to split is if there's two lanes going the same direction. And if there is two lanes going the same direction, your only option is up the middle. You can't go to the outside of these cars because that's illegal passing, right? Your only option is up the middle. FYI, in case you didn't know that. 
And some people are like, well, I would never lane split. Then don't. Like I just said, nobody says you have to. And um, a lot of the times, even if you are a pretty competent rider, like you're aware of what's going on and you know your bike's dimensions and you know how to swerve and you know how to brake, some people just don't want to take the risk of being near people and that's perfectly fine. No one says you have to. So right here, I definitely cannot fit. Like there's no way, right? So what am I gonna do? I'm still gonna place myself in a position to where I know right now if I needed to, I could go in front of this Tacoma. I know I could fit right there. And if I really went slow and like kind of paddle walked my feet, I could probably go in front of this Ford. I probably could make it to the front, but it's a lot of extra effort where I would have to like, you know, stop and like do what I'm doing, like with my feet down and I don't feel like doing that. So unless I could just ride smoothly with my feet on the pegs all the way to the front, um, I'll just stop. Or if I'm tired, Sometimes the best choice is just not to do something. I'm like, eh, I just don't feel like doing that crap. I just don't feel like lane splitting. But even though I know I could probably fit, where I'm pl placed myself, I'm still in first gear. I'm looking at this lady texting behind me. So just in case she starts to creep forward, I'm ready to get the hell out of the way. And I'm looking for other motorcyclists coming up behind me that might be way narrower, narrower than me and do want to lane split. So always be aware of your surroundings, right? Make sure this car is not gonna go straight looking for cross traffic just always aware of what is going on at any moment i should know what's going on right so there's cars next to me there's cars behind me there's an ambulance up there there's a light just turned green it just turned red um the car has lights on don't have the lights on there's a bike list they're on their phone they're not on the phone there's 30 bicyclists up there there's people coming out of the gym like just be aware of what you're doing what's going on that doesn't mean to ride around like this like freaking out inside your helmet but have a calm awareness about you that right there summarizes my philosophy of riding regarding your judgment. I want you to have a calm 360 awareness of your surroundings at any moment, at all times. So right now, can I split? Yes, I can. Can I fit? Yes, I can. Do I want to? Eh, not right now. I'll wait a little bit more. Because I know the road opens up once we get through the intersection. I'll wait a little bit more to go up this hill. And then I'll probably go out in front of these cars. Just because I don't like to be static. So I like to be slightly faster than the flow of traffic. That's just me. And I don't want to wait for someone to make a decision about what they're doing. Like this right here. I can see that guy in the blind spot. He's looking at me. My big brightly yellow lights. Um... But like when two people, like if me and that car are deciding like what I'm gonna do, what is he gonna do? We're both assuming and waiting for the other person to make a decision. And I think that's where defensive driving of what I think most people mean is right defensively. To me, that means reactionary to other people. And I think that's stupid. I don't wait till what anybody does to react to them. That's the problem. I make the decision and they're gonna react to me. Right, I'm making the choice. I'm going up here, dude, and you're gonna have to move or stop. Like I'm not waiting for you. And why do I have that type of attitude? Because this is 28 times more dangerous than driving a car. And I'm gonna do anything I can, put the lights on my bike, use my horn, go around cars, lane split, whatever the hell I have to do to put myself in a better position to be more visible and to make it home every day. And if that's not the way you ride, I don't care. Ride however you want to. It's your life, just like it's my life. I've never been in an accident involving anybody else. I never came close to it. There's been times where people almost ran into me, like they switched lanes and do that, but I was just prepared to move out of my way. The only time I crashed on the public roads, I was by myself on a twisty mountain road and I messed up. A whole bunch of things went wrong. I have a video about it and then I crashed, but there's no one else involved. It wasn't I was avoiding somebody or I was in a wrong spot or riding in blind spots. It was just my error on the twisty mountain roads, which was actually probably the most common type of crash. A single vehicle crash is uh, you mess up a corner and you go live. But anyway, um, calm awareness, I think, is the big highlight of this video. What I want more people to adopt. You see how slow this Yaris is going? So again, I'm not just going to sit there and go slow. This truck is getting out of the way from me because they obviously they say who I am. I like to wave at people. Thanks, buddy. And there you go. Now he's following me because these guys are going. Remember, I don't, I don't go with the flow of traffic. And I told this to people before. And some people are like, dude, that's kind of crazy that you think that and that you would say that. And some people are like, that's exactly how I ride. So I find it to be very polarizing, the next statement I'm about to say. Either you know exactly what I'm talking about and you're like, yeah, that makes total sense. That's how I ride. Or you're like, dude, that's insane. Why would you ever say that in a public way, like on your video? But I'm going to say it because I think more people than not agree with what I'm saying. 
and understand my point of view. Even if you don't do it, you still understand. So this is what I'm talking about. I actually don't really care what the speed limit is. I pretty much always ride just slightly faster than traffic. If the speed limit is 55, but everybody is going 70, I'm probably gonna be going about 75. That's just me. Now, there is a little asterisk for this statement, and that is this. That's if I'm in traffic. You have to remember, if the speed limit's 55 and it's three in the morning, and I'm just out riding around by myself, I'm probably going 60. Like, there's no, me there's no need for me to go 80. Look at this old lady right here crossing the street. It's a red light on my side. Oh, okay, luckily. Luckily, that light had a green arrow, so they got to go, but I was like, man, if this was about to be a green light, hopefully all these damn cars would have waited and saw her, but um, that could have been bad. But she was crossing when it didn't say cross, so that's the risk of doing that. But anyway, so I only do that when I said the flow of traffic is going. I go slightly faster than the flow of traffic. So if there is no traffic, then I'm probably going around 5 miles per hour over the speed limit pretty much everywhere. But if there is traffic on the highway, on the city streets like I am right now, whatever it is, I'm going faster than the flow of traffic. And people are like, man, you must make a lot of money to pay for all the speeding tickets. Um, I haven't gotten one ticket on a motorcycle in like six years. I've gotten one speeding ticket on my motorcycle on a big empty road by myself, and that was it. I've never gotten a ticket for anything close to reckless driving, lane splitting, coming close to another car, display of speed, nothing. No tickets whatsoever at all. And I've been lane splitting. I ride the way I ride. There's been motor cops behind me. There's been cops in front of me. I've lane split and riding between cops before and did everything I'm doing, how exactly I'm doing it, at the speeds that I'm doing it, passing cops, everything. Not one person's ever said anything to me. Maybe I'm just lucky. Um, I don't know, but um, I don't think that's just luck. If I was next to that uh, Armada right there, I'd probably close the gas tank for him and then give him a thumbs up. <laughs> if I was like right next to them and I actually stopped near them and I noticed it early enough, but um, maybe I would do that. I see some people do that before and it's like a two-edged sword, right? Like I'm doing something cool for the person. It's a girl, so maybe she would like appreciate it. But if it was a guy, they'd probably be like, hey bro, why the hell are you touching my car type of thing? And get all mad and whatever the hell. Calm awareness. Calm awareness of what's going on. I ride slightly faster than the flow of traffic because I want to create movement. I got these big bright yellow lights on my bike to make sure people could see me. Sometimes I play around and act like I'm swerving around, you know, beer cans right now or rocks or whatever the hell's on the road. I don't know. Just to make myself break up the monotony of just people zoned out. I call, I think everybody's like drunk zombies. There's like a driving back home and just like on their phone. Look at that, look at all that traffic. There's on the phone in like a very like minimal brain activity state. They're just kind of doing what they do every single day is driving back home, drive to the store, drive to work in their car and just oblivious to their surroundings. I mean, half the cars I passed so far have been on their phones. Um, it's pretty wild. So I do things to create movement, to create visibility for myself, and to get people to kind of have little moments of waking up. Like, you're in a vehicle right now, dude. There's a, there's a bike, there's a motorcycle right here. Are you not aware? Like, pay attention. And sometimes, like, if someone's gonna, like, if they're, like, moving lanes, like, into me, sometimes I would almost, like, like, go into them a little bit, and then they realize I'm right there because it kind of freaks them out but it also wakes them up because they're on their phone texting like i know what i'm doing i have plenty of room but sometimes i kind of like i'm not saying i go towards people and try to hit them i don't i really know how to word it correctly but sometimes i just i wait a little bit longer than what i know i could like i could give plenty, people plenty of room and like you know move way out of the way but if someone's really oblivious to what the hell is going on sometimes i just make it a point like dude because if there's no consequences to your actions, behavior doesn't change. I was a drill instructor for four years. And if you yell at a recruit to tell them to do something, they're probably just gonna do the same crap again. But if you IT the crap out of them, which means intensive training, like you make you scream at them, they make you do push-ups, flutter kicks, mountain climbers, and you just destroy them for five minutes straight, they're probably gonna, pain retains. That's what I like to say, pain retains. If you, if there's punishment for something that you do, they're probably gonna learn their lesson. Just as why, a lot of kids, you only have to touch the stove once when it's really hot to realize, well, that was pretty damn stupid and you're probably never going to do that again. But sometimes people have to st touch the stove to realize it's hot in the first place. But if you just yell at a kid, don't touch the stove, don't touch the stove, and they finally do it and they burn the shit out of their hand, well, um, that was a better lesson than that happening. So sometimes, you know, revving your engine, blaring the horn, 
getting kind of close to people to make them realize what they're doing and get off their damn phone. Sometimes that's the thing that I do sometimes. But either way, calm awareness was the um, lesson of this video. And uh, as always, thanks for watching. Subscribe if you didn't subscribe already. I'm doing videos pretty much every day. And yeah, talk to y'all later.